Illegal harvesting isn't just a financial loss for the pickers and the landowners. Our forests are taking a beating as well. When an area is poached, it's often slashed without any concern for regrowth. Este año, la Copa del Mundo atrajo más televidentes americanos que nunca antes. El fútbol es el juego de los mundos. On all accounts, the cruise line industry is sailing strongly against the tide of recession. According to a recent industry report, business has grown by 7.5% over the past decade. If you add up all of the money that tourists spend on local shops, restaurants, hotels, and then add in all the money that the cruise lines spend on stocking the ships with local food and supplies, that brings Washington State $631 million annually. Not long after Ted Bradford was released from prison, his legal team had all of the evidence from the crime scene tested for DNA. And they found skin cells on both the mask and the tape the rapist used to cover the eyes of the victim. But the DNA didn't match Ted Bradford's. Right now, the health department says shellfish from the Duwamish River, like mussels, clams, oysters, they're highly toxic, they should not be consumed. But salmon is a different story. In fact, the Muckleshoot tribe harvest Chinook and other types of salmon from the river, and then they're sold to local grocery stores. But it's not that simple. The laws addressing groundwater pollution are fragmented between local, state, and federal agencies. So you could pick up the phone and call the Department of Agriculture, and they may tell you to call the Department of Ecology, and then they may tell you to call the city or the county. In other words, even the agencies themselves aren't sure who's supposed to do what. Tonight, a different side of the immigration debate. A lot of people think it's pretty simple. People who come to the U.S. illegally should be deported. But what if you didn't have a choice about coming to America because you were brought here by your parents? Alonzo Chejade was living the American dream, a student, an athlete, and a volunteer in his community. He graduated from North Kitsap High and then the University of Washington both with honors. I built a life here, I have friends, I, I'm going to university. But last March, that all changed. Driving home from Bellingham, Alonzo and a friend made a wrong turn and ended up at the Canadian border. That's when an immigration officer discovered Alonzo wasn't a U.S. citizen and didn't have a green card. He was arrested. I ended up in um, uh, a room there for the whole day with no food, only water and then I was sent to detention. You're thrown into detention like a criminal and you have to be bailed out and all the things that have happened to him, it opened my eyes to what we're doing in this country to people who could be a resource for us. Krista Jensen is an activist campaigning on behalf of youth like Alonzo. We have a broken immigration system that hasn't dealt yet with, the, with a loophole in it, which is uh, the children that are brought to the country by their parents. Alonzo and his family came to the U.S. in 2001. They were fleeing tough economic times in Peru. It was a hard transition, but over time, the family adjusted well. His parents started a business. Alonzo went to school, made friends, and built a life. But now he's facing deportation. I've been trained to fight for my rights. That's what I'm doing. I ask for your support, because supporting the dream is supporting a great team. He's become a poster child for the DREAM Act, a proposed bill to help the children of illegal immigrants brought here under the age of 16. The bill would allow them to stay, if they are between the ages of 12 and 35, have lived in the U.S. for five consecutive years, graduated from high school, and demonstrated good moral character. Alonzo has been speaking out in support of the DREAM Act, giving countless speeches and attracting media attention. A University of Washington graduate from Peru in the U.S. illegally hopes an 11th hour reprieve will let him stay here. But unless the so far, Alonzo's campaigning efforts are paying off. The Department of Homeland Security is reviewing his case, and he's been told that he can stay until the DREAM Act is either defeated or passed in Congress. I'm a visionary. I'm visualizing, I'm not gonna get deported. And so far in my life, every time I visualize something, that's what happens. Versions of the DREAM Act have been before Congress since 2001. Opponents say the requirements are too broad and too difficult to prove. Plus, many argue it rewards parents for their illegal activity. There's a war brewing in central Washington, a war over clean water.
For years, residents of the Yakima Valley who rely on private wells have complained of bad taste, bad smells, and brown water. And they're pointing the finger at nearby farms, especially dairy farms. Now, a new study has found alarming levels of pollution in the groundwater. And while experts try to pinpoint the source, the findings are giving ammunition to both sides, leading to a heated battle. The Yakima Valley is the heart of Washington's agricultural production. Hundreds of miles of irrigated land stretching in all directions. But production may come at a price. We have wells in this area here where people are told not to touch the water, not to drink the water, not to give the water to their animals. An estimated 30,000 people depend on private wells and according to the Environmental Protection Agency, one out of five wells is contaminated by nitrates. Nitrates are a toxic compound. At high levels, they can be a serious health threat. When Heather Young heard that other wells in the area were contaminated, she had her water tested. The nitrates and the nitrites are um, off the charts. At the time, Heather was trying to get pregnant. I can't prove that both of my miscarriages were due to the water, but it does seem awful coincidental that once we had a new well, I was able to carry my son full term and um, didn't have any problems after that. Nitrates can come from many sources, faulty septic systems, abandoned wells, commercial fertilizers used on crops and golf courses, man-made lagoons created to hold cow manure, plus the manure used to fertilize fields. But a group of local activists led by Helen Redout blamed dairy farms and large feedlots called CAFOs, concentrated animal feeding operations. I saw our valley being transferred from a beautiful, pristine, uh, fantastic area to live into a sewage pit. We're doing this the best way we know how, and I think that is not having a negative impact on the environment. Dairy farmers like Bill Waverin and Adam Dolson argue that today's regulations require them to engineer their land so animal waste can't sneak off their farms and pollute nearby waterways. Most of our pens will slope towards uh, lagoons, which are kind of big, giant uh, pools of water throughout our facility. So every drop of water that we have that enters our facility has to stay on until uh, we release it into our fields at uh, agronomic rates. Still, not all dairies are foolproof. In March, this manure lagoon breached at the Bartleheimer Brothers Dairy in Snohomish County. Redout worries a similar spill could happen here. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, they've pointed the finger at us for you know, 10, 15 years now. Uh, we're the blame for every environmental problem that this uh, valley has encountered. This spring, the EPA stepped in to find out exactly where the pollution is coming from. What we want to do in the future is prove that we can address the problem and government can be responsive so that they can have clean water in the Yakima Valley. The EPA took a thousand samples from local wells and the results are expected in the next few months. Once the source of pollution is determined, the EPA will create a targeted plan to clean up the lower Yakima Valley. Dairy farmers say they'll be on board for cleanup efforts if the test results point to them.